Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it upon his head, and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross, to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, This man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Thomas Christ. Grace and peace to you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, there's got to be a term for this thing. Let's call it divine irony. You have so many things in the Passion account of our Lord that are true, but not in the way that someone means them to be. You have elements of the story that confess this deeper spiritual reality that people just can't see. It's almost as if all of this happened with the idea of giving us preachers plenty of sermon fodder for thousands of years to come. Take, for instance, the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And they mocked Jesus as king of the Jews, yet if anyone ever was king of the Jews, it was him. Yahweh was king of the Jews when they pined and whined for an earthly king like all of the other nations. And God warned them what they would get with an earthly king. Taxes and wars, enslavement of their children, and all sorts of cruelty. And we want a king, they cried nonetheless, but not a king like him. This king, who rules the heavens and the earth by whom all things were made. This king who sets aside his cosmic power and majesty in order to serve his lowly, rebellious creatures and to submit to mockery and suffering such as this. For them, for you, you've never seen a king like this. 
His crown is not the self-aggrandizing gold and jewels we might expect, but the bitter suffering of a crown of thorns, and that would only deepen. Behold the man. In other words, look at him. Pilate is showing them that Jesus has already been flogged and bloodied. Is that good enough for you people? What a pathetic sight it must have been. But their thirst was not just for blood and for punishment, but for death. They wanted a complete rejection, a total humiliation, a final and unequivocal, get him out of my sight. Crucify him, they cried. Now he has gotten what he has not deserved, but he is about to get what you and I and all sinners deserve. You, Christian, behold the man. Behold the Son of Man, bloodied for you, humiliated, rejected, punished for you. Look to him, and only to him. Fix your eyes on Jesus, for here is your salvation. Like the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that all would look to him and live. Soon the Father himself would be turning his back on his Son, forsaking him, We can't comprehend that kind of darkness, but it was so to save us from it. It was this way, so that he will not be casting you away from his presence or out of his sight forever. But instead, through Christ, God beholds us. He looks upon you with favor, lifts up his countenance upon you, and gives you peace. You crucify him, Pilate bargains. I find no guilt in him. But... God had put all guilt on him. He made him who had no sin to become sin for us. Well, we have a law, they argued, and by that law he ought to die. Oh, you have a law, do you? Well, what about the law of God, which you trample and trash? By that law you ought to die. This is your punishment. All sinners would make ourselves to be God, though we are not. Here is one who actually is divine, but he makes himself a man. Here is one who fulfills the law and is about to trample and trash death itself, for all the lawbreakers that there ever were would be. A pilot is scared. He wants answers. Jesus gives him none, and so he threatens. All bluster. I have the authority to crucify you, he says. But the author of authority who stands now before Pilate, he knows the score. Your authority is given from above. The only one with ultimate authority over Jesus is himself. He has authority to lay down his life and authority to take it up again. And Pilate would have one more ironic honor. It was his hand that would scribe the very first written words of the Gospels. Yes, the charge against Jesus. This is the King of the Jews, a fitting title for one with real authority here, but whose kingdom is not of this world. And as Jesus is crucified for Pilate, for the Jews, and for all sinners, and for you, behold the man, see your salvation in all of its beautiful, divine irony. In the name of Jesus, amen.